I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Digital. Maserati, Rick, and Detroit. D. Convertible, Bird, and Miami. Miami Graduated summer cum laude. Strip club made a tsunami. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Grateful Edmonds with the snowflakes. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. Falcone with the cocaine. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Larry Davis from Close Range. Best play ever come out of Brooklyn from the park certainly was Fly Williams. No, no doubt in my mind. Huh? To get a chance to have I played with him and to see him play, man, it was just it was just a wonderful thing. Fly Williams is just awesome. He can shoot from anywhere on the court, take two or three people at the same time. And he he just made Brooklyn uh, street ball what it is. Fly. I'll give you the story, right? We we were playing the Knicks. We were playing Friday night, Saturday night in New York, Sunday afternoon in Philly. So the Saturday night we played the Knicks and we were on the bus going to Philly that night. So Fly came to meet, see me and stuff. So I told the guys on the team, I, they said, they said, who's that? I said, that's that guy Fly William. They said, how good is he? I said, he's better than anybody on this bus. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> I put it like that. <laughs> so that's what I thought about Fly. <laughs> that's, a lot. that's right. No, you, you got that wrong. I had 45 the first half. Okay. Well, I came to ISA. It was an all-star game. I played with, uh, you know, my boys, Whirl and Jock and, and the rest of them. The first half, I had 45. So I switched teams. I went on the other side. Scored 55. So, I mean, I had 100 for that day. You know, that's a record book. There, you know, nobody scored 100 in the park game yet. So I mean, that's my that my my special thing of my life that I did. That had 100 in a day. You know, and that's a true story. I mean, you hear a lot of stories about me, but that one there is true. I had 45 playing with World in them. The second half they had to guard me. I had 55. So I mean, I had 100 in that game. So I mean, that story is true. You might hear something that sound kind of Wow, but they're my true too. <laughs> There's a player located in the proximity of every park, a legend. When you go in that park, you're trying to perform like whoever that legend was. So when you leave, you want the next people to talk about you in that park. That's the, the history. You just get etched in stone with that park. If you already know if Fly Williams is the, the legend of this park, then I can only be as good as Fly Williams, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's who they're gonna compare me to. Oh, he was busting, boy, he was tearing ass, he couldn't miss, he couldn't do this, he was dunking. Man, I ain't never seen nobody do that since Fly. First of all, I'm James Fly Williams, you know who I am, I'm the best. They ever came out the streets that played this game. You know, I mean, you can go from east to west, north to south, borough to borough. I'm the only one drop 50 out of half regularly. You know, like a kid with diarrhea. You know, I, I, I was tough, man. They got the stories out there, and my stories is true. Scoring 300 in a day. You know, playing two, three different games, you know what I'm saying? 60 here, 45 here, 55 there. I had to add them up in the course of the day. I scored about 200 and change, you know? That was my thing every day, you know, going from game to game. You know, I had to walk in, and it was regular. They didn't lie. 50 out of half, and he going somewhere else to play. Street basketball was an art, you know what I'm saying? We brought it to another level, you know? Back then, when we played, it wasn't highly spoken of as of the day. But the street legend today is guys they give a name to. I mean, we earned it, man. You know, year after year. I mean, the guy played now for two years, and he's Kid Dynamite. You know, and I can look at him and say, the guy ain't even got an eight-foot jumper. You know, I mean, you can O and R all day long, but they don't finish. The object is scoring the dudes. We had an honor and a code. When you get on this blacktop, bring it. Not New York legend. Not street ball legend. I am the international legend. Jane Fly wins. I got my name Fly from the way I dress. The ladies that travel with me, and then my game got fly, fly, fly. My first game in here, 61, and then play the whole game. 
But I danced when I got out here, though. I danced. I mean, you can put on Jane Brown when I was out there. I danced. When I came through them gates, the show was on. And when I left through here, there wasn't no more room in the book. I'm 6'5 and got a guy 6'2 guarding me. Oh, man. I'm going to do him dirty, man. I didn't give nobody no respect, man. You know what I'm saying? I was worse than Rodney Dangerfield. They weren't afraid of no one. They weren't afraid of no one. You know, some guys have fear. You know, I, I've seen it. Me, I didn't fear no one. Everybody feared me. Me, 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 me. You had to come to Rucker to show your game, to show your dance, to showcase your, your art. If you if you got any type of game and you think you can do something with this here right here, you got to come to Rucker. Anybody that you talk to about fly winds, they'll tell you he was the baddest man in this town. Legends don't die. They don't die. They don't die. They multiply. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Chief Kemper, for joining us. For the second time in as many months, we're here to address what has become a modern-day crisis, the heroin and opioid epidemic. As I've said in the past, this is not only a top law enforcement priority, but also a public health emergency. Today, we can announce that together with our partners in the New York City Police Department, we have dismantled another sizable and profitable drug distribution ring operating here in Brooklyn. We've arrested 13 people um, who we allege were part of this ring. An additional five people were arrested during the takedown, and I expect um, numerous additional arrests to take part in the next few days as part of this conspiracy. Four defendants are being charged under our state's uh, drug kingpin laws, um, which imposed increased penalties for those who deal in large amount of narcotics, who make a tremendous profit in a certain uh, period of time. The investigation started with undercover purchases of large quantities of heroin. The investigation expanded to include court-ordered um, electronic surveillance, with intercepts of phone calls and text messages. The wiretap uncovered the truly wide range of this operation. We allege that in a three-month period beginning in January of this year, 2017, this ring distributed over two million glassines of heroin. At a street price of six to ten dollars per glassine, the heroin in this case had a street value as high as $20 million. Now, the alleged leader of this trafficking uh, operation, who along with three others, and who is being charged under the Kingpin statute, is James Fly Williams. Avid basketball fans have heard of him. Um, in the 1970s, he was a high school uh, superstar and college basketball prodigy who grew up in Brownsville, Brooklyn. He led his college team to the NCAA tournament. He was later drafted after playing for two years in the first round um, in the American Basketball Association before it merged with the NBA. While his pro career was actually short, he made a name for himself as a street basketball player and local legend in Brownsville and other parts of Brooklyn. His popularity and status in the community may have ironically helped him in operating and hide um, this elaborate criminal enterprise. Now, what makes his alleged conduct even more unfortunate is that Fly Williams had his own well-documented battles with addiction. By his own admission, he had abused drugs for many years and had become severely addicted. <laughs> Fly Williams is no stranger to the misery that addiction causes. Um, he knows it stunts opportunities for our youth and that the misery it brings along. It destroys lives. And yet, we allege that he was spreading heroin throughout Brooklyn and beyond, breeding addiction and bringing misery to others. That someone with his stature in the community, with his influence on young people, would run such a substantial narcotics operation is truly sad and reprehensible. He will now be held accountable for his actions. 
as the, invest as the investigation developed, we set out to learn where the heroin Fly Williams uh, is being charged for selling was coming from, who was distributing it, and where it was being sold. I'm going to refer you to, to the exhibit on your right-hand side. Our investigation led us right to the Bronx, a man named Richard Rivera, who we have charged with supplying heroin in bulk quantities to defendant Hansel Martinez Cintron. Cintron, who's also from the Bronx, would receive the heroin, would cut it, and would package it, and then he would then supply it to Jeffrey Britt, who was known as Doobie. Doobie, we allege, works together with Fly Williams. Together, um, and with the other charged kingpins, they maintained a heroin distribution ring that had far-reaching tentacles. Um, they made both uh, wholesale purchases and uh, sales, and then street-level retail sales with the people down below who are street-level dealers. The network sold heroin across Brooklyn in neighborhoods of Brownsville, Bed-Stuy, Bushwick, Fort Greene, East New York, and elsewhere. It even supplied heroin to certain counties upstate New York. This was big business. We've already talked about some of the numbers, um, but they're called kingpins for a reason. Our investigation reveals that this trafficking ring was buying $30,000 of heroin per week and sometimes more. Um, we allege that Fly Williams and his associates are the worst kind of drug dealers because they were selling this poison to their neighbors and others in their communities. These are our communities and our neighbors. These are our family members, and they need to be protected from the scourge of heroin. We talk a lot about the number of murders in uh, New York City and in Brooklyn in any given year, and we should be thankful that the police department has helped drive down the numbers to near record lows. But in Brooklyn, we had almost three times as many overdose deaths last year as we've had homicides. Heroin kills, opioids kill. And in a very real sense, the individuals who sell these drugs do irreparable harm to our communities. And as it is often the case for drug trafficking rings, we have collected evidence that the members of this ring were ready to use guns to protect their business. And when executing search warrants, we recovered six firearms, including one allegedly belonging to Fly Williams, gun right over there. These firearms were found in various uh, locations where the drug dealers stored their heroin and their money. Narcotics rings inevi inevitably breed violence. By their very nature, they have to protect turfs, they have to protect their business, and these guns provide that protection. When arresting the members of this ring, we recovered um, two kilos of heroin, oh, nearly 14,000 glassines of heroin, and about 185,000, a little bit over that, in the United States currency. These are professionals who knew what they were doing and took steps to evade um, detection and law enforcement. I wanted to show you how this member hid and transported the heroin in these very realistic uh, looking cans. Can. They had Pringles cans, they even had this, they even had this bottle of water that looks like water, but inside it's carved out so you can put the heroin so it can't be seen. And you're walking down the street, it looks like you're holding a bottle of water. Very detailed cans, had WD-40 and paint cans. And this was an elaborate operation. Don't be uh, misguided that um, this was simple uh, trafficking. These were people who clearly thought about how they were going to transport drugs and evade law enforcement. In running his operation, Fly Williams kept a close, uh, trusted team. He employed his own son, um, James Williams Jr., his girlfriend, Lizette Kelly, and other family members and close associates. We plan to continue to investigate and dismantle narcotics distribution rings as we have been doing increasingly over the past several months. Um, 
As I've said in the past, this is but just one tool for us in our overall approach um, to combating the heroin and opioid crisis in uh, New York City, and in particular Brooklyn. We recently secured funding from the City Council to launch an innovative program here in Brooklyn that diverts heroin users to drug rehabilitation centers and allows for dismissal of their cases if they meaningfully participate in drug treatment um, programs to combat their addiction. I'm grateful for that funding and I'm looking forward to getting that started later this year. This approach of addressing both the supply and the demand for these very dangerous drugs should go a long way in reducing the spike of users and the overdoses in Brooklyn. That is our goal. I want to thank uh, the hardworking members and relentless uh, detectives of the New York City Police Department who brought us this case and the investigators and prosecutors and other staff members here who helped uh, build it. This is a successful investigation done in a very short period of time and the results speak for themselves. This was a tremendous uh, operation that we, we dismantled. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We back. It's your boy pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Brooklyn with it. Brownsville to be more exact. All my niggas from Brownsville, all my niggas from Brooklyn, period. Y'all niggas get in the comment box, let it be known. Y'all already know what it is, for real, for real. Now, the guy that we about to cover today is going to be a legend in two games. And actually, man, he's going to be a, more than that. Um, we we say we in Brownsville, we Brooklyn, but this shit worldwide, for real, for real. The guy that we're going to be covering today is going to be a guy by the name of James Fly Williams. Now, just a little bit about James Fly Williams. He is going to be a guy that was born in 1953. Um, I want to say he was he was born in Brooklyn, Brownsville. He went to Madison, um, and he pretty much took off playing basketball. Um, I want to say he got his starts in playing street ball. Some people said that. I think I seen somewhere where he was a picture, a pitcher, um, got too tall, had to move on. But um, he was actually third team All American, um, playing for Austin P back in 1974. He was um, conference player of the year in 1974. He was two time um, first team All Conference player in '73 and '74. Um, he also had his jersey retired by Austin P. And he he only played there pretty much for two years. Um, he was, uh, I want to say drafted. He was drafted and his contract was sold to the St. Louis Spirits. Now, that's kind of what I want to talk about predominantly because that's really where I got my, I got my introduction of Fly Williams. Um, or I should say where I really first heard about him or something stood out about him to me. Um, if you watch, uh, this is going to be for my avid sports fans. If you watch a 30 for 30, they got one where they're talking about the ABA and they're talking about the St. Louis spirits. And they really highlighting the guy by the name of Marvin Bad News Brown. That was, um, Barnes, Marvin Bad News Barnes, excuse me, that was a, he was a tough player, um, kind of remind me of a more skilled Draymond Green, but that's neither here nor there, um, the, the main thing that kind of stood out to me in that documentary was he played there for a year, um, and I want to say, I don't know if he was released or if he left the team or something like that, but never mind that don't really got nothing to do with it but even after leaving the team he was still hanging around so that automatically told me oh okay i know what he was he was the plug with it so i don't know if this how far the history with this go back but he been a legend he been out here um it it just the findings in 2000 i think um Last year in 2017 was where this operation was uncovered. I'm not sure if he even has been sentenced yet. 
we are not the courts. We are not the trial. We are not anything. We just street niggas talking about street shit. So niggas like, oh, he ain't get convicted yet. Um, whoever the judge on his case is not watching mob ties. And if they are, they know everything we know. <laughs> Probably a little bit more, <laughs> to be honest. But that's for niggas to be in the comment box sometimes. But y'all already know what it is, man. Y'all niggas hit the bell, subscribe. Make sure y'all like the video. Make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter. It's your boy Popalot, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We're going to be back with some more real trail shit. It's the mob. Mob, 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 ties. James Fly Williams is a retired American professional basketball player. A noted street basketball player from New York. He once scored 100 points in an IS-8 league game in 1978. Born in Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York, he attended Madison High School, where he initially was interested in playing baseball. He was a pitcher, but was advised that he had become too tall to remain competitive in that sport. His initial introduction to basketball did not go well, but he eventually made the adjustment to the new game. His ability to play basketball came from his frequent participation in street basketball games. He played with some of New York's finest street players such as World B. Free and Earl the Goat Manigault. When the games eventually ended, he would go out in search of more opportunities to play basketball. Williams dominated the sport of basketball at Madison High School in the early 1970s. By his freshman year, he was 6 feet 5 in, with outstanding moves. A fantastic shot, a terrific knowledge of the backboard action, and could play the crowds. However, due to his poor attendance at Madison High, Williams completed high school at a prep school, Glen Springs Academy, in Watkins Glen, New York. The book Heaven is a Playground discusses, among other things, the education of Fly Williams. According to Loose Ball's author Terry Pluto, Williams took the nickname in homage to Curtis Superfly Mayfield. He was known for his play at Rucker Park in the Hole. After Williams completed high school, he was recruited by an assistant basketball coach, Leonard Hamilton to attend Austin P. State University in Clarksville, Tennessee. Williams arrived on campus in 1972. He was greeted by a reception which included a skywriting demonstration which spelled out his name. His freshman year, playing as a guard, his scoring record was especially noteworthy. Williams averaged 29.4 points per game in 1973, fifth best in the nation. The Austin P. State University basketball team, the Governors, won a bid to the National Collegiate Athletic Association tournament. Williams was true to form, scoring 26 points in a first-round win over Jacksonville University. In the second round of the tournament, Williams managed another 26 points, but the Austin P. Governors lost to the University of Kentucky, coached by Joe B. Hall, in overtime. Williams scored 51 points twice in his freshman year. In his sophomore season, Williams averaged 27.5 points per game earning a third-place scoring record in the NCAA. Once again the Governor's basketball team won the bid for the NCAA tournament. Once again Williams scored 26 points, but Austin P. was crushed by Notre Dame, 108-66, in the first round. The record established by Williams in his two years at Austin P. was impressive. Williams scored 1,541 points with a 28.5 point per game average. He left college due to hardship and pursued a professional career. Austin P. responded to Williams' two-year record, in 1975, by building the Dunn Center, a larger gymnasium, to accommodate the increase in attendance at basketball games. The Denver Nuggets drafted Williams in the first round of the 1974 ABA draft. Following the draft, there were several offers to buy the player contract on Williams. Eventually, his contract was sold to the Spirits of St. Louis. A young sports broadcaster named Bob Costas announced their games. He would later contribute to a book, Loose Balls, The Short, Wild Life of the American Basketball Association, a sports book originally published in 1990, by Simon Schuster, and written by sports writer Terry Pluto. The 1974-75 basketball season was a disappointment to Williams and his team. He managed to score only 9.4 points per game for the Spirits. His scoring was erratic and he was known for his showmanship rather than his scoring proficiency. Williams did not play during the following year, after which the Spirits of St. 
Louis were one of two teams, along with the Kentucky Colonels, to fold as a result of the ABA-NBA merger, and Williams ended up without a team despite some interest in retaining him in the league. Williams was selected by the Philadelphia 76ers in the ninth round of the 1976 NBA draft but the team did not sign him. Williams then played in the Continental Basketball Association and the Eastern League, but he failed to receive any attractive offers from NBA teams. Williams later played for a basketball team in Israel, but he never attracted the serious attention of recruiters in the NBA. Williams admits that his temper was probably an underlying issue which predicated his lack of serious offers. Williams' career was eventually ended due to a robbery attempt. A bullet wound left him with decreased lung capacity, and scar on his back. In retirement, Williams spent time working with disadvantaged youth and continued to play streetball. Williams is listed as the number three athlete on the 50 greatest streetballers of all time by the Street Basketball Association. While playing at Austin P., Williams' nickname inspired a humorous fan chant, The fly is open, let's go P. Fans still chant Let's Go P at all basketball games. Williams' number 35 jersey was retired by Austin P. State University on February 5, 2009. A book on the life of Williams was written by Knoxville, Tennessee based author Dave Link. Called The Fly 35, it was published to coincide with the jersey retirement ceremony. At age 64 in May, 2017, Williams was arrested in Brooklyn, New York, and charged with being the alleged leader of a large heroin distribution ring where authorities say the legendary streetballer who counseled countless Brooklyn kids, spinning his wild life of drugs, disappointment and near-death experiences as a cautionary tale. Then the flamboyant former hoopster, whose real first name is James, ignored all his own advice. The troubled Brownsville native, 64, was busted as the kingpin of a massive drug ring that peddled two million vials of deadly heroin on the Brooklyn streets of his youth. His popularity and status in the community may have ironically helped him hide this elaborate criminal enterprise, said acting Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez. Hess beloved as a local legend, Gonzalez said Thursday. He will now be held accountable for his actions. Williams, a high-scoring college basketball prodigy and American Basketball Association washout, was one of 13 people arrested Wednesday for allegedly spreading massive amounts of heroin throughout Bushwick, Flatbush, Fort Greene and his old Brownsville neighborhood. Some of the dope found its way upstate, officials said. Prosecutors say the ring put an estimated $12 million to $20 million of heroin on the street. Arrested along with the flashy scorer for the long-defunct spirits of St. Louis were his namesake son James Williams, 36, of East Flatbush, and his stepson Jeffrey Britt, 34, of Flatlands. James, under the name Fly Williams III was an actor who appeared in the movies Freedomland and Finding Forrester in addition to spots on the TV series Law Order and Third Watch. The son was apparently high when arrested inside his Brooklyn apartment, according to a source. Investigators also recovered more than $185,000 in cash, six weapons and another two kilos of heroin to wrap up the Operation Flying High investigation that started in September. Many of the drug buys allegedly took place near the Brownsville Recreation Center, a place Williams knows well from working as a volunteer mentor for local youths over 15 years. He ran a tournament here that kept a lot of kids out of trouble," said Cardale Alston, 19, one of the Brooklyn kids who blossomed under Fly's guidance. This center changed my life, he continued. I started playing basketball here and basketball is about to take me to college. Hearing that is shocking. In a 1997 interview with the Daily News, a clean and sober Williams detailed how he used his past to illustrate life's pitfalls for a new generation of Brooklyn kids. I know what they mean now about a second life, because I'm in my second life, he said. Some people think I'm dead, I know. The six foot five Williams was a scoring machine at Austin P. State University in the early 70s, pumping in 28.5 points per game in two spectacular seasons. The James Madison High School product sported a giant afro weighed about 140 pounds and had no teeth when he joined the St. Louis team for the 1974-75 season, his one and only year of pro ball. Man, he once said, I wouldn't be the fly if I had teeth. After averaging just 9.4 points per game, Williams' hoop streams were over, leaving behind a legacy of potential unfulfilled. He played in Israel, but without the same success. Williams struggled to find his way off court, battling with drugs and alcohol doing a pair of jail stints and remarkably surviving four shootings. In 1987, 
an off-duty court officer blasted the family patriarch with a shotgun during an argument after a game in Starrett City, Brooklyn. Fly lost parts of his lungs, kidneys and stomach. For a local hoops aficionados, he always remained one of the all-time playground stars, right there with the late, great Earl Manigault. The free-shooting Williams once scored 100 points in a game in the famed IS-8 Summer League in Queens. Supposedly pouring in 45 during the first half for one team and 55 in the second for their opponents. Things changed at some point for Williams, whose once welcome presence in the neighborhood took a terrible turn into crime. Authorities say Williams, his eyes heavy-lidded, his expression dazed in his latest mug shot, oversaw the entire heroin operation. The drugs were purchased from suppliers in the Bronx, brought back to Brooklyn and resold either in bulk or individually packaged for street deals. Fly. Both his sons and co-defendants Hansiel Cintron and Richard Rivera were all charged as major drug traffickers. Each faces 25 years to life in prison if convicted. The younger James Williams was held on $250,000 bail at his arraignment. Fly was taken to a hospital for an unspecified health issue on Thursday, postponing his court appearance. This is why this is a sad case, said Gonzalez. Hess a person who really understood the addiction understood selling narcotics could do to the community, and young people specifically. For more information, please follow the link below the video.